Welcome to the Fire and Earth Podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Groover. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Well, welcome to another edition of the Fire and Earth Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Mefford. And I'm Kathy Groover, and welcome back. We are so happy to have you here. What are we talking about today, Jason? Well, today I thought we would talk about masks. Like saying, comedy and like, tragedy masks, like kabuki theater, like ancient... Hall- Halloween masks, Halloween right? Masks. Since that wasn't too long ago. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, not any of those masks, actually, even though it's, it's kind of a good... Um, maybe analogy for what we're going to talk about. But um, maybe to start off, let me, sh- let me share with you um, a story, an experience that I had, and that'll kind of help explain why we're talking about masks, okay? Um, I was at a uh, retreat, went to a retreat. It was on um, kind of bringing mindfulness into the workplace and how to actually do that um, to help reduce stress and some of these other things. So it was it was different speakers and people who had been doing this in corporate America, how they were working on it so I could learn how to help my clients bring that into, uh, into their workplaces as well. And one of the sessions that we had uh, was on masks. And, uh, and it was a really interesting um, discussion because what happened is the speaker handed out these little postcards. And on the postcards, uh, what he wanted you to do is, is it was broken into two different parts. Um, there's a front and a back on it. And so on, on the one side, we put, um, you know, information about ourselves, like, you know, I'm a male, my age, where I live. Okay. But just, just kind of anonymized on the other side, it was split in it split into two parts. And on the left hand side, we were supposed to draw a mask of what we try to present to the world. Mm. So the face or the mask that we're presenting to the world. Mm -hmm. And so we drew that mask and then we were supposed to put, I think it was three to five words on that as well. Then on the right hand side of the mask or of the postcard, we were supposed to draw the, what we really felt like, right? So the mask that we're showing the world and on the right hand side, what we actually felt like a picture of that. Mm-hmm. And again, like three to five words describing it. So he was going through, cause he was talking about how as people, we all wear these masks. We show the world one thing, but inside we're usually something completely different. Um, and this, this was actually, it was a presentation I actually got emotional in, uh, was, uh, on the verge of tears or a little bit of tears too. Uh, which I know is not cool to admit as a guy, but hey, it happens and you go with it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Because it was so powerful to me. And one of the things that was so powerful was what he had us do was get up. And so there's about two or 300 of us in this room. And after we'd fill out our postcards, we get up and we start walking around. And what we're doing is passing the cards to other people just randomly. Mm -hmm. So it's like we're shuffling all these cards in this room of two or 300 people. And then we were supposed to go back and sit down at our, we're, we're at our seat and look at the card that we had. And here's what the amazing thing was, right? Is I, I looked at the card that was in my hand and it was almost identical to mine. Some of the same words on both sides, the same facial expressions on both sides. And I flipped the card over and it was a female in her 50s that lived in Phoenix. And that just kind of hit me because, you know, what I realized is there's everybody's out there trying to put on their best face for everybody, but inside we all have some of those same, you know, feelings of, of, you know, uh, inadequacy of, you know, Hey, you know, to, to the world, I'm, I'm, I'm making it appear that I have my shit together, but in private, I'm dying, baby. I mean, it's not, I don't have my shit together. And uh, it kind of reminded me of of another story when I was younger, because, you know, I remember in this youth group that I was in, one of the leaders at one point said, you know, um, everybody has issues and troubles. And he actually made reference to this really popular girl, you know, again, that you would think, oh, you know, she's beautiful. She's smart. She has everything going, going on. And he's like, no, she has the same insecurities 
that everybody else does. So that's why I thought it might be good for us to talk about masks because a lot of times, um, you know, for us to realize that we are still like everybody else, even though we might see them wearing this mask inside, they're probably just like us and are still dealing with some of the same kind of things. Yeah, so. absolutely. Absolutely. That's such a powerful exercise. And it's, it is a really good reminder. And I remember being at, um, when I studied with, I think it was Thich Nhat Hanh when I was at Harvard and there was a couple other psychologists, psychiatrists who were teaching this three day module. And, uh, they were talking about conversational psychology. And one of them said, you know, how many of you were bullied as a kid? And almost every hand went up. How many of you have imposter syndrome? Almost every hand went up. And you're looking around this audience of like 1200 people who are some of the tops in their field, mm -hmm still feeling inadequate, still feeling like they weren't good enough, still sometimes that scared little bullied kid of, I don't have anybody to sit with in the lunchroom, you know, and it's, it's we forget that, we we do forget that, and a couple of years back, and I'll try to dig up this video, uh, uh, a client of mine, she's a police officer, but she and I have these awesome philosophical conversations about this very thing, about what is really happening inside of us, and we can't assume anybody has it all together or anybody doesn't have it all together. We never know what their story is. We never know what their inner dialogue is. And it was a video of, I think it was maybe just silent with, but with music. And it just showed people walking through their day, people getting on the subway, people walking down the street, people doing exchanges at the lunchroom, all this stuff. But it, then it had a bubble of what was actually happening in their life. Um, just diagnosed with cancer just lost a child, husband just walked out, um, mother died of Alzheimer's, just got, you know, I mean, and it would put the cat down, you know, and it just showed what all these people were actually going through on the inside, which allows us to be a little more patient, not only with ourselves, but with everybody else. So that person that cuts us off on the freeway, yeah, we can yell and scream and think they're just being a jerk. We don't know what they're off to or what they just left. And, and there's that story about the guy sitting on the plane and the kid behind him is kicking a seat, kicking a seat, kicking a seat, kicking a seat. And he finally turns around and says, my God, woman, can you control your kid? And the lady says, I am so sorry. I just buried my husband. And I, on my way back from the funeral, I'll try to keep my kid in line. Mm -hmm. And it's like, not that we want to excuse away bad behavior, but it is true that we never know what is behind that mask. We never know what is actually happening in people's lives, which can allow us to be a little more patient again, with ourselves and others. So that, that's a great, what a great exercise. I think we need to, we need to all start doing that. Just walk around and hand people our cards. <laughs> <laughs> hi, I'm, hi, I'm dysfunctional. Me too. You know? Well, and, and, it's, and it's, inter exercise. it's interesting because, you know, I was talking to some people at Google because you mentioned imposter syndrome. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you think about Google and the employees, I mean, these are like the Uber brains of, you know, in corporate America. I mean, the, the people that work at Google, a lot of them are very, very technical. They're very smart. They have a very high IQ. And, and that's what some of them were telling me in studies that they'd done. Two thirds to three quarters of the people at Google have imposter syndrome. They feel like they're in over their head too. So it's like if some of the smartest people in the world are feeling that, hey, you know what? If you feel that too, it's okay. You're human. <laughs> It's okay That's to so be human. It's so offensive, right? So yeah. Offensive. No, no, I know. I, I know it is, but it's also, you know, and I'm kind of looking at the flip side of this, which is thank God we put on masks because if we walked around actually completely 100% vulnerable, letting our shit show all the time, it would be a shit show. <laughs> Nobody would ever get anything done. I mean, but seriously, like if you, if you walked up to someone in a cafe and said, oh my God, how are you doing? And they actually seriously told you how they were doing, we would never get any work done because there is that secondary gain and there is that poor me thing. And there is that, you know, so on one hand, it's become socially acceptable to put that mask on. You can take it to an extreme of so putting on another persona. So there seems to be this almost, you know, this gradient nature of these masks of, yes, we want to be socially acceptable and we don't want to just spill our junk in the street and we have to function. And do we take it to the level where we are so fake um, and so phony and putting on such a persona that it's not actually being truthful anymore? Because I think we all have, we all wear different hats at different times. You know, I interact with my parents very different than I interact with my friends, than I interact with other speakers, than I interact with my clients, that, you know, we have those aspects of our personality that we tap into and we do have different masks for different locations. I mean, wouldn't you agree with that? 
Yeah, I think I think we do, right? Because because as we all have a feeling or a need to be accepted, and 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 where where the hard part comes in is, um, you know, this is where cognitive dissonance comes in, and so that's that's where again you're trying to hold two contrary beliefs at the same time, and and you can't do it. It's 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 hard to do, right? And so the the problem is, like you said, if you, sometimes you get people. Uh, you know, that, that you kind of see in these um, reality TV shows and, and some of the celebrities and other people that are out there, they're just so fake, right, that it almost makes my stomach turn. And so, you know, the problem is if you go to that far extreme of, you know, really acting your whole life, yeah. you know, it, it totally fucks with your life. Yeah. I mean, that's why, you know, you end up, ha you know, having addictive problems, you know, going through relationships a lot, um, you know, because you don't have your shit together. Even right. though it appears to everybody else that you do, you absolutely do not. And right. so there's that fine balance between, yes, you know, if we walked around um, negative all the time, you know, and just airing all of our dirty laundry, well, that'd kind of suck. Right. So, you know, but there's times when it's okay to be vulnerable and to let people know what's actually going yeah. on. Right. Um, one, one of the other, uh, heard another speaker use the term vulnerability is sexy. Mm -hmm. And I thought, huh, well, that's kind of interesting, but I, yeah. you know, it, it shows that we're actually human. Um, and it, and it's, it's, it's okay. Um, you know, we don't want to get down on ourselves. We don't want to, you know, bring other people down, but it's okay to kind of acknowledge for a while. You know what? Sometimes life sucks. Yeah. It's okay, yeah. but um, let's just acknowledge it. Let's feel it as deeply as we can at the time. And then let's move on, you know, take five minutes, take an hour, you know, go take a nap, do something, but you, you do have to move on, um, you know, with yourself. But I think, it also, you know, realizing that other people are wearing masks and going through this too, uh -huh. like you said, helps you be more compassionate yeah. to well, other and people. There, there's an authenticity in letting that emotion show. And mm -hmm. I mean, you and I are both speakers, probably a lot of people who are watching are speakers. And there have been times where I have told a story because I tell a lot of stories during my talks where I have literally started to tear up. Mm -hmm. And I was just at the UK hypnosis conference where I was doing a talk on using visualization and hypnosis. And I always tell the story of a client of mine who ended up dying of cancer and how we would do this visualization of angels swooping in and carrying the tumor away. And she started to feel better and she started to be improving and she was having dinner parties. And then she went back to the doctor who said, not only had the tumor not shrunk, it actually grew and it gave, he gave her two weeks to live. And I wish he wouldn't have done that because she was thriving, you know? Um, but over the course of that two weeks where she was dying, she kind of took me aside and she said, the only time she felt relief, the only time she didn't have pain was when she was doing those visualizations and it gave her strength. It gave her choice. It gave her this feeling of power and that we didn't find the cure. We found healing. Now I tell that story a lot, a little more emotionally than I tell it to you because I'm just sort of reviewing it. But I literally, I have never done this before. I put her picture up on the screen and I went, so I want to tell you about a client of mine. And I looked back at the picture and just burst into tears. I didn't even get into the story before I'm standing in front of this audience, tears streaming down my face. And you see me cry. I get blotchy. It's not pretty. Um, <laughs> oh, come on. A, I'm still a, pretty. It's not an okay look. But it's just so fun because I just kind of lost it. And then I looked out in the audience and you could see all these people kind of going. And it, I mean, I would never use that as a device <laughs> of, hey, look how human I am and accept, you know, and, and relatable. But sometimes something just moves us. And I don't want to sob through every presentation I give, but I've realized if I start to tell a story and I get a little emotional about it, it shows them that I actually care about what I, that I'm passionate about what I'm doing. And it, it, sometimes people look at us on stage as this other thing, this like bigger than life. I'm not like that. They're better than me. Um, they're more sick, whatever they think of that. And this, I think brings us back to a more human level. At least I feel like that. Um, it makes us more acceptable and more 
relatable as a speaker, as a, as a professional. And again, I don't want to burst into tears during every talk because I've told that story dozens of times and occasionally I tear up and I usually don't. For some reason that day it hit me, you know, and I just let that happen. And the woman in the front row stands up and goes, I'm a crier too. And hands me a Kleenex. And I'm like, oh, Love it. On, on one hand, I was like devastated. On the other hand, I'm like, this is the sweetest thing ever because it brought this entire, and it was the last story I told brought this entire group together in this sort of kumbaya moment of let's feel, let's let those masks down. Let's talk about our vulnerabilities. And if someone dies who you love, we can grieve for that. It's okay to have that emotional response to that. So it was, you know, I could have suppressed that and stood there and powered through and been all stoic, but I'm like, you know, it's coming out. Here we go. Blah. <laughs> well, I, I, I think it's it, okay to let the mask go. Well, yeah, we've got to we've got to let it lot got to let it drop. I mean, it, it's interesting because you were you were saying that, and um, I think it was this last week or the week before. There was in our little face group uh, uh, group for the National Speakers Association. Um, there was somebody that brought up that point. They're like, you know, is it okay to get emotional on stage? And, and I, I was kind of pissed that so many people were like, oh, no, that's unprofessional. And so I had to respond back. And I'm like, are you kidding me? If you feel an emotion, you go with it. Yeah. You know, because the thing is, is we are human. And, and it's that authenticity, right? Yeah. If, if you don't cry or grieve when somebody that you love dies, there's something wrong, right? You will eventually. Yeah, you will eventually, and and, and It'll it's okay. Come out one way or the other. <laughs> People understand that. People expect that. It's it's yeah. it's okay to to remove the mask or to or to to be more who you are, right? And 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 I guess because that's that's kind of another side of it is that sometimes sometimes people wear masks because they're trying to hide their hurt, they're trying to hide their their insecurities or other things like that. Sometimes people are wearing masks just to try to fit in and be like someone else. And, and I think, you know, there's the, the, those are two kind of different things. And, and, and again, that's where that cognitive dissonance comes in. If you're always trying to kind of be a chameleon and fit in with other people, you're never going to have those deep relationships with people. You have to be you. You have to be authentic. Some people aren't going to like you. But the people that do like you are going to love you and your life will be so much more fulfilled. You know, I mean, I, I'm a freak. I'm a weirdo in, in a lot of oh, ways. I know. And you know what? This well, is thank why you. we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you got to bring the freak show in here. <laughs> well, you, you counter my normalcy because I'm oh. so normal. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> Right. No. And that's why we started doing this because we had this sort of like weird, crazy person rapport, this, this bantery brother, sister, like thing. And that's, I think what brought us together to do this. You know, if we were, yeah. <laughs> we have to be similar enough that we can play off each other to do, to actually make this work. But, but what, to, to go back to what you were saying about, you know, putting on all these masks and trying to be somebody else. And what is the quote, you know, just be yourself. Everybody else has already taken. <laughs> Which, Oscar Wilde, one of my Oscar favorite Wilde. quotes. Yep. I've always found funny, but it's like, I think, and this goes back to what we've mentioned so many times is the self-awareness of, well, who am I? You know, you go to work and you're the receptionist and then you go to your gym and you're the lady who does aerobics and then you go home and you're the mom and you go home. Well, who are you? And we use these external labels to define ourselves. We use these thought forms and these relational things to say who we are we don't actually know who we are under all of that. This is why I see so many specifically, typically moms who their role is mom. They are mom. Maybe they're a little helicoptery, parenty kind of. They do everything for their kid. And then suddenly their kid leaves the house and they wake up one morning and go, who the fuck am I? Because yeah. they're not mom anymore. You know, and there's this struggle with identity of, well, what am I once that label, hi, my name is well, what happens when you're not that thing anymore? And, and I found that when I left Hollywood because it was, oh, I'm an actor. I mean, that was my, I was so identified with that thing. And when I moved up to Santa Barbara and I was no longer an actor, I would find my, when people, when people would say, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I used to be an actor. Used to be? And yeah, there yeah. was one day, well, thanks. But there was, one, <laughs> there was one day where I said that to someone and I went, why am I still hanging on to that? Like, why am I still so associated with 
that perform that that's who I was and I didn't want to let that identity go and I found that really fascinating so I think that's one of our challenges as humans navigating this planet is when we drop those labels which are those masks who are we underneath that you know and that becomes a very broad philosophical question um we'll bring Eckhart Tolle on we can talk about that but it, but who are we you know who who am I under these labels and I think that's something that we really have to sit with ourselves and and figure out that's, that's a challenging question well, yeah, because it's interesting that you you said that, you know, about being an actor, because I've experienced, you know, in, in different ways, similar things like that through my life, too. And it it is amazing how much of our own identity we put on whatever that thing happens to be. You know, it's like checking the box. And, um, you know, I, I remember one of the guys that I used to work with because he, he told his his son, um because they were they were a mixed race marriage and and you know people were trying to put put them into boxes you know it's almost like you have to fill out that that form right you know what are you and they've got race on there and 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 one of the things that he taught his kid is don't let people put you in boxes yeah uh, because that's not who you are and 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 so I think it's it's interesting you know like you said if we think well I'm an actor that's who I am or I'm an athlete, that's who I am, right? Because the, the, the reality is, and I mean, I'm friends with different athletes and Olympic athletes. Well, you know, when, when they're an athlete and an Olympic athlete at the top of their game, and that's who they are. Yeah. But the problem is at some point, you know, you get old really quick in professional sports. You know, you've got yeah. to retire in your 30s a lot of times. <laughs> And, and so again, if, if your whole identity is wrapped up into some label or some mask that you're wearing, when that goes away, it's like your whole world just gets dropped out from underneath you, you know? And so you've got to be thinking, well, athlete is maybe a label or it's something that I do, but it's not who I am, right? Because I will continue to be a person even after whatever that thing goes away. And so, like you said, you know, the helicopter mom, it's the same thing, you know, sometimes when people retire, you yeah. know, they, 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 they work their whole life and, and then all of a sudden that that's no longer what's there. And sometimes they end up kind of giving up the will to live almost, yeah. um, you know, I, I saw personal family, family experience was, you know, I kind of saw that with one of my grandmothers was, um, you know, she, she was the mother, the grandmother, the caretaker, because my grandfather had Parkinson's disease for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And so she was the constant caregiver and was always doing and always going. And when it got to the point where, where my, my grandfather had to go into a facility because, you know, she couldn't physically move him and do some of the stuff that, that needed to happen anymore, literally within six months, she was dead. You know, and so her, she had, she'd tied up so much in her, uh, you know, being that caregiver that when she was no longer the caregiver, she really just kind of gave up the will to live. Right. And, you know, again, she was at the, at the end of her life, but it's, it's just a, a story to show that, you know, don't place so much on that mask or that label that you have, find out who you are, be who you are. Yes, you might be a receptionist, you might be a truck driver, you might be a, an accountant, <gasps> you know, I used to be one of those. Uh, sorry, very yeah, yeah, I know. sorry to hear that, right? Yeah. Woo! Oh, great. Yeah. Very, very okay. um. <laughs> I can't do math, so you can, you can do the accounting and I'll just, uh, I know to give right. my agent 10%, that's, that's, that's all, all I That's all right, know. with the counting you can point. make the numbers be what you want them to be anyway. Oh, perfect, that's great to know. Yeah, yeah. There. No. <laughs> oh, but so, it, I was... It, there's there's something that happens so much in the United States when we're at a party or we're at a mixer or we're at some event. What's the first question we ask? What so do what, do? Do mm -hmm. what do you do? And it got to the point where I was a, I was in my rebel stage a couple of years back, and they'd say, so what do you do? And I'd say, when? What do I do when? What do I do at work? What do I do in my spare time? What do I do on Tuesday nights? What do I do, what do, I do when? You know, and you could see these people getting annoyed because it was sort of a shitty response because I was just sort of being troublemaker. You're trying to mess with them is what you're doing. Trouble. <laughs> yeah, well, but, but, it, but it, started, it opened up a whole different conversation. What do I do when? You know, on Tuesday nights, I do hip hop. On weekends, I do flying trapeze. Uh, you know, um, and it's interesting because I, I was at a woman's retreat here in Santa Barbara and we were going around the circle and saying who we were and what we did. 
and I went through my thing, you know, and a, and a couple women down the thing said, so I identify as a bisexual travel writer, da 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 and I was just like, okay, nothing in what she said threw me, except she said, I identify as a, and I thought, huh. And I really started to think about those aspects of my life. I do, I, I identify as a dancer, been dancing since I was three. I identify as a massage therapist. I identify as a speaker. I identify as a trapeze artist. I identify as a, and, but it was just an interesting thing of, is that just that thing I do or do I identify with it? Does my identity get wrapped in it? But the way she phrased it, it didn't sound as if it wrapped it in. It sounded as if she could just put that on and take that off, which I thought was a really interesting way to phrase it. Because I, I had never heard, other than gender stuff, I've never heard anybody say, I identify as a travel writer something something. You know, it was kind of kind of interesting the way she put it together. Well, and that is... Uh... That is really interesting because, because again, you know, and, and words are important. And so when you say I am, and then you put some label onto it, right? We probably do kind of wrap that identity around it, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of interesting because before you were talking and saying that, you know, I would, I would say, you know, same thing like you, you know, I do lots of different things, right? I mean, I'm a coach, I'm a speaker, I'm a musician, I'm a poet. I'm a husband, father, you know, I mean, it's like all these different things that we are as, as an identity, but is that who Jason is? No. Right. Jason is a musician. I like to play music. Sure. Um, but if I could no longer play music, would I cease to be Jason? No. Right. And so you know, again, I think that's, that's one of the things that hopefully, you know, people are, are understanding is your self-identity is not wrapped up into the masks or the labels or the other things that you might do or how people might describe you. Yeah. So, I mean, with all the fires happening in California, you know, I have a friend who's in paradise where the entire town is gone and yeah. they not only lost their house, <laughs> they lost their four rental houses. So the they livelihood gone. literally, literally have nothing. And what was so fascinating about this is what she's been posting on Facebook is about perseverance and Hey, everybody who's in the same situation, don't think you can walk right back in your house. Don't think you're going to walk into the store. You're going to have to rebuild this. And her messaging is so authentic and so strong and filled with grace and I don't think it's a mask that she's putting on. I think she's just authentically like, Hey, I had nothing before, I'll build it back up. Uh, but to look at someone like that who can let that mask drop and just be authentically strong for the people in her community who also lost everything, that's so impressive to me. So if you could face that where you literally have nothing left and be that strong and that authentic and, and honest in your approach to people, then we can all do that. Yeah, well, and, and it's, um, you know, again, I, I, that word authentic is so important to me. Um, you know, because like you said, if, if, and, and so maybe this is a way again of, of trying to look at this and think, well, is what I'm doing a good thing or, or not a good thing is, you know, who are you, right? To think about that, you know, what is it that you stand for? Who, who are you? What, how do you want to make this world a better place? How do you want to leave your impression here? And, you know, uh, embrace your quirkiness and your weirdness you know, because that's, that's what makes the world an exciting place, honestly. I mean, I have met some of the most interesting people in my travels all over the world. And I love, I love just hanging out on the street and talking to random people and finding out stuff. Because to me, it's just fascinating. Humans are fascinating yeah. people. But, you know, it, it, as you're thinking about that, you know, embrace that quirkiness, the weirdness that you have. And, and, uh, just be true to who you are right now. If we can all improve, right? But again, if if there's that authenticity, and like you said, you know, your friend kind of expressing this to people and saying, you know, look, it's okay, right? We started with nothing. You know, we all came into this world as a naked baby. Uh -huh. Well, you know, everything after that is is 
you know, more than we added, you know, and I, I can't remember where I heard this story, but, you know, of like an immigrant father, you know, that comes in and the, the son's saying, oh, you know, you haven't really accomplished anything, you know, you're still poor and whatever else. And, and the dad says, well, you know, when I came to this country, I had 10 cents or a dollar in my pocket and the clothes on my back. That's all I came to this country with. And I've, I've, you know, I have a home. I have a job, I've raised four children, and I have $2 in my pocket now, right? Kind of a thing. So, you know, that, that man's identity wasn't tied up in the amount of money that he made, right? But it, in his gratitude for what he actually was able to accomplish. Because again, over that time period, the man generated lots of income to be able to do all those things and take yeah. care of his family. And so, you know, while some people might look at him and say, well, you're not a success, I would say bullshit. That man's a total success, yeah. total success, yeah. um, you know, and, and just be true to who you are, be authentic. And if, if you feel like you're wearing a mask that you shouldn't be wearing, then take it off yeah. and, and, and don't, and don't be afraid to, um, to be vulnerable. You know, because, because especially, and, and so this is one thing is uh, from a guy perspective, right? Is I, it was, it was a guy who was, who was giving that speech that said vulnerability is sexy, right? And I'm kind of thinking sexy, right? Ha ha ha, you know, kind of thing. And then I was, I was talking with um, some women, you know, and I said, yeah, you know, I just heard this speaker say this and they look at me and they're like, oh yeah, vulnerability is totally sexy. And I'm oh, like, yeah. what? It's a guy. Right. We think, mm -hmm. you know, we have to be the he-man, but actually vulnerability is more sexy to women anyway. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Because, you, because you're authentic and, yeah. and that's what we need to be. Take off the mask. Exactly. Exactly. And, and my final thought on that, and we'll let everyone go off and, and look at their masks and, and take those off and, and figure out what they look like is just that, I mean, that exact same thing. It's figure out who you are. Uh, and there's an exercise, whether you do the mask exercise that we talked about at the, the beginning, which I think is just even by yourself, that's a really good thing of you. Know, what am I showing the world? Go back and look through your Facebook posts and see what you're actually portraying to everybody. And is that who you are underneath all that? Uh, and the other thing is write down those who you are. I'm a mother. I'm a sister. I'm a, you know, what is all that? And what does that bring to you? What does that add to your life? And if you strip away those labels, who are you underneath? We're just this, you know, this, this positive energy entity human who's walking around, hopefully loving yourself and loving other people. And if you drop away those labels and those masks, that's still who we are. So everybody go forth and examine, ask that question of who am I and who you want to be to those people around you and to yourself. And so, uh, yeah, I think that's a good, uh, a good, a good message for the day. Good place to end. It just, uh, you know, the, the song the, from the who, who are you? Who, 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 who was just jumping in my head. So I thought I'd share that with everybody else. So now you have a song. <laughs> a song that a, th a song that will be stuck in your head the rest of the day. An earworm. And for those of you who are into musical theater, I was singing chorus line, you know, who am I anyway? Or we could do another one. Who, oh, if, or Les Mis. Who am I? Jean Valjean. I am not Jean Valjean. I'm Kathy Groover. And I can be reached at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. And uh, thanks for listening on. And uh, we look forward to having you on a future episode. Go out there and unlock your potential. See you next time. Bye.